Good afternoon. Welcome back to another Q News RuPaul's Drag Race Down Under Recap. My name is Michael James and uh, you have been with me for the whole season of this uh, wonderful uh, drag queen experiment that we've had down under as we have seen 10 fierce queens fighting it out for the crown. It all came to a head this weekend where finally we got to find out just who would take home the crown. Spoiler alert, I have her here with me from all the way across the ditch. It is our first ever Drag Race Down Under winner, Keita Mean. Welcome. Oh, thank you, Michael. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for being here with us. You look ecstatic. You must be over the moon. Oh yeah, like such an understatement. I just um I can't I can't fully process uh what has happened and uh what like um yeah the position I'm in it just is mind blowing. Yeah, I mean it's how long has it been since you filmed all those all those um those winners edits and then uh, had to oh, sit right. here and wait to see if you got to see yours? <laughs> oh, we wrapped filming mid Feb, so. Like uh, four, four months. Oh, what's that? Four, four months? Yeah, it's actually not as long as um it felt. <laughs> well, see, so yeah, some of the others around the world they've got to wait like twelve months sometimes to find out. Yeah, if yeah. So four months, like, geez, that's not long ago <laughs> at all. <laughs> and here we are. Um, so taking back to on Saturday, you're sitting there and you're watching it, um, and you've seen everything unfold on the show and around the show. How confident were you that it might have been you? Oh my gosh! You know, um, as as after the second to last episode, um, obviously, you know, RuPaul asked everyone to start putting putting the shout outs out there and hashtag, um, you know, the team that you're you're backing. And it was so overwhelming. I I could never have thought in a million years that people would sound off like that in support of me taking the crown. So, um, you know after filming it I wasn't super confident but then like in that week lead up I was like starting to think like holy shit like maybe um you know maybe maybe I could take this out sorry for swearing on your podcast. No, that, I swear in these interviews all the time it's right oh, okay okay out. good <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um yeah I started I started believing it and um yeah and then but yeah when it happened it was still very like it was like time stood, stood still it was um it was it took a while to kind of like sink in yeah and it was interesting because I mean like you look at the numbers and you look at the history of the show um and you know statistically Scarlett was on the run for the win um oh, so sure. Yeah, she so numbers game it was hers, but then you know you had such a strong game from everybody, and then you take into account that public sentiment, and then literally like I was trying to count the numbers, who's hashtagging who, that public <laughs> um, that public support for you was huge. Everybody just loved you. Yeah, it was crazy. I could never have never have um, dreamed dr dreamed of that. You know, it, it it was totally mind blowing. I like to have everyone like show that kind of support was just like crazy uh, how how was that my life you know that's nuts well you did an exceptional job on the show and speaking of which your numbers stacked up really well I had you as our dark horse to take out the crown um because you were so consistent <laughs> Um, you know, you you may not have picked up a win until the end, but you know, just look at you consistently placing um, so high and and doing so well. And I think the judges raised a, a pretty uh, interesting point um, in that final episode when they said, you know, it was a kind of that halfway point. It was kind of around that time um, that Anita left that you kind of shed something. Um, were you feeling like you were held back when Anita was there? Was it a, a struggle to compete against her properly? And it with things different once she left no completely honestly I don't think it was an, an, an Anita thing I think um it was coincidental I, I was definitely uh really struggling the entire the entire competition not even just up until the halfway point um I, I was frustrated that I knew I wasn't giving it what I knew I was capable of um and it was just psyching me out and every week I was like oh I'm done for I'm I'm gone and I and, and I was sinking into this like um like an element of like depression and like I it was it was it was really I, I was bumming myself out you know and psyching myself out so 
I don't think it was anything to do with competing against Anita. Um, I think it was us coincidental, but um, I, I, the whole time I was really competing against myself. And when I knew I wasn't doing well, I was, I was, I was getting more and more hard on myself, but I was so glad that I was able to kind of like eventually, eventually start like sorting it out because um, I think if I hadn't, or if, if I took even like a moment longer, um, I potentially wouldn't have uh, got to the point I needed to in time uh, for the finale. So I'm so grateful that like, finally, I was like, come on, Kita, like it's now or never, bitch. You know, like you, get, you <laughs> sort that shit out. <laughs> um, and what, what was it, the turning point then? What was it that pulled you out of that slump and, and you know, gave you that push towards the end? Uh, I really don't know. Um I don't know. It, it was such a wild experience. Unlike anything I've ever gone through in my life, um, I still to this day cannot make sense of any of it. So I, I couldn't, I couldn't psychoanalyze and work out what it was or when it was. Um, it, it, but, you know, something that I've always had um, uh in, in drag is like determination you know if there was something I want in drag I will like work and work and work for it because like I, I just love it so much um that that it's an easy it's an easy motivator for me because I just I I just want to continue doing it for the love of doing it you know absolutely and now speak of being determined um you know in your personal life I suppose before the show it came up that you had a a considerable weight loss um, journey you were there was more to Kita than um, oh, yeah. we got to meet yeah, on the show. a lot more to Kita. yeah <laughs> how much how much weight did you lose what what how did that all take place yeah uh so I've, I lost just under 80 kilos um and I've obviously like I'm still working to get that's the a last person of that's me yeah yeah <laughs> yeah for sure I definitely couldn't even hold 80 kilos in my hands. I'm such a weakling. So like, I, I don't know how I was carrying that around, you know, but I, I mean, I was struggling. I was having so many issues with like uh, my ankles and like, I, you know, I, I would have to take weeks off drag on end uh, just to like recover, like, like uh, sprained ankles, like, and this was like religiously happening. So um, it, it was really, it was messing with my life in so many ways, but like, it was also messing with like my drag life and like my this thing that I you know devoted my life to and had turned into a career and I, I was beginning to realize very quickly that like I if I don't sort it out like I won't have a career um I might not have a life um and even if I do have one it's going to be fully dampened by this so um yeah it, I had to sort it out for sure I had to do something about it so I'm so glad I did yeah it's an amazing transformation um and <laughs> you know it's a testament to the, the character you are that, that you are able to be so strong and, and persevere which you know you you did through the show and it was um it was really beautiful to see um what was your i suppose your your proudest moment during the entire filming of the show uh, I think the proudest moment would be um, the moment when I got to hang out with uh, the boys from the Falcons and hang out with Carl um, and put them into drag. I mean, like they, they loved that so much. Like each and every one of them, you could just tell that they were having the best time. Um, they were also happy and positive and uh, grateful. And um, the love that they had for each other was just like, it resonated around the room and, um, they could also see the love that we all had for each other as like sisters in that competition. So um, that was definitely the standout moment. Um, it, it was also like, we. it felt like the competition sort of like disconnected for a while. Like we weren't really competing at that time. It just really felt like a whole group of queer people like sharing this love. And yeah, that was, that was a really special moment. Beautiful. And um, speaking of favourite moments as well, looking back and now watching the show and getting to see everyone and getting to see everything, what was your favourite thing to watch back? Uh, if it wasn't that, was the favourite moment of the whole show to watch back? Um, uh, favourite moment to watch back? You know, I, I really enjoyed et cetera getting salty about my ball costume. <laughs> <laughs> she was. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was so salty. I thought it was hilarious. I um and in, in the moment I was like, oh fuck, that sucks that she hates my outfit. Um, but watching it back, it was hilarious. I was like, you know, it, again, it's that whole thing of like everything in hindsight is so much lighter than it feels at the time, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. I had a good chat with her about that. Uh, she was still salty. <laughs> yeah. <but> no. <laughs> is she still pressed about it? <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit, but she'll get over it. Um, do you still have the ball outfit? Oh yeah. Oh yes. Excellent. You're going to save it for <laughs> save it for the tour. <sighs> I sh- I feel I feel maybe I should do like a heightened version of it. <laughs> yes. With etc. just just for shits and gigs. <laughs> I should gift it to etc. at a grand gifting ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> um now speaking of all of the girls, like they, it was such an interesting bunch. I love the chemistry between um, all of you. Uh, who did you love working with the most out of out of all of them? Oh, uh, there was a few of them. I I absolutely loved Coco, Maxi, Karen. Like, um, they they were they were all like super like sweethearts. I I vibe off energy. Um, I'm a real I'm a real people person, and I my like my wide or like connects with other energies and um yeah the the three of those stand out the uh coco maxi karen for sure beautiful and um when you walked into the workroom day one everyone finally gets in there you've got nine girls to compete about uh, to compete against um you know some you probably don't know others who was the one person you pegged this is my biggest competition um before i got to know any of them i would have uh thought art and karen um and then quite quickly i threw scarlet into that equation as well yeah well sh- bitch had some talent <laughs> oh, oh yeah yeah for sure and she's also a total sweetheart you know um scarlet scarlet was very um in tune with um you know like asking how i was and kind of genuinely you know just like giving giving you like the little like nudge on the shoulder like she she could she she vibed off energies too and she knew when to just sort of like you know give that little like nudge on the shoulder and the little wink just to you know like that little human connection to be like you know let's just let's keep going girl you know that's great. It was, it was really good to see when I, like, I've spoken to so many of you after you come off the show um, and despite some fucking shady shit from all of you, um, there was always so much love. Everybody still had so many good things to say about each other. Was there a, a lot of that behind all of the, the bitchiness? Oh, for sure. Like, um, you know, I don't even think it's like behind the bitchiness, you know, like that's just, that's how like we that's how we communicate as, as drag queens, as like drag queens that love each other. Like we say like shady shit about each other. Um, I, there wasn't really much that was said like in the confessionals or anything that was like really like, like just designed to be mean. I, I don't think, not that I caught. So um, yeah, no, for sure. There was a lot of love for sure. Oh, beautiful. Well, hopefully we're going to see um, a lot of love from all of you when you go on tour. Um, yes. That's yes. exciting. The reigning queen gets to start her tour with her <laughs> nine backup dancers. <laughs> um, but on top of the tour, we also get to see you um, with all of our Brisbane f- uh, fan base and all of the Q News people. We can come along and see you somewhere special because you are coming to visit us at Fluffy very soon. In fact, yes. on Sunday, the 25th of July. That's right, for their 20th anniversary, which is crazy. Can you believe 20 years of Fluffy? I know. I was actually thinking back and I was like, I used to work at a bar just around the corner from Fluffy. That was almost 20 years ago. And it's making me feel old. (laughs) Um, But it's not just you. It's you and Anita. You're both coming together for those celebrations on the 25th. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we've been running a show back in New Zealand for uh, I think about six years now, maybe even coming into our seventh year called Drag Wars. Um, so uh, Harry said, hey, look, we do Starlet. Why don't you come to a special edition of Starlet Wars as part of the anniversary? So yeah, we are so excited to come and party. Oh, fantastic. Is it your first time to Brisbane or you've been there many My times? My first time in Brizzy, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Well, you're going to have a ball. Um, Cloudland and Fluffy are just an amazing venue and it's going to be an amazing place where people can come and catch up with you. Can we do any meet and greets? 
Is yeah, meet and greet absolutely. Um, I think tickets are being released um, shortly, if not now. Um, but yeah, like we'll we'll find a link and make sure we like uh, link it here somewhere. So I'm sure you know how to do that stuff. <laughs> I'm an old bitch. I don't know how to do all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I'm sure we will be covering it and we will be letting people know where they can come and get tickets to see uh, yourself and Miss Anita Wiglet at Fluffy. Yes, and of course, I'm so excited. Ah, it's going to be fantastic. And of course, tickets will be on sale if they're not already for the uh, Drag Rouse and uh, National Tour coming up in, is it September? Yes, September. Oh. And it's like the entire cast of uh, Down Under. So that's going to be so excited, exciting, just not only to reconnect with them, but for us to all be able to perform together because like we haven't had a chance to do that, to perform all as one big cast. So that's super exciting. Oh, it's amazing. Well, we can't wait to see you uh, wherever we may catch up with you. Now, if anybody wants to follow you, uh, which is your best social media platform? Where would you love to catch up with people? Oh, um, gosh, uh, hit me up on uh, Instagram or uh, I've just started um, trying to send out some tweets, which is quite exciting. <laughs> um, uh, I'm not good at it. So don't, don't judge my terrible use of social media. But like, yeah, it's all just um, at ketamine, one word, K-I-T-A, mean, like I'm nasty, but um, only in the bedroom. <laughs> beautiful well you can go and follow ketamine on all of her socials and you can follow uh, us at q news uh, by subscribing by the buttons below to our continued videos because we also have our interviews with the runners up coming up as well and also make sure you stay tuned to q news for all the rest of our drag race news including our coverage of all stars six coming up keen Amin, thank you so much for joining us today it has been an absolute pleasure and congratulations on what was an absolutely amazing run on the very first season of drag race down under oh thank you for having me michael i can't wait to see you in brizzy Yes, I will be there at Fluffy with Bells On. I'll come and catch up with you. Uh, everybody else, I'll see you at Fluffy with Kimine and Anita Wiglet. I'm Michael James for Q News. Have a fantastic day. We'll see you next time.